Hello and welcome to The Natural Spinner. You will see I have Angora on my combs today. Beautiful, soft Angora bunny fluff. I got a special request from Rachel um, to do a video showing how I comb Angora fiber. So, here it goes. The fiber I'm using, the type of Angora, I can't quite be sure. I bought this Angora fleece some time back, like a few years ago actually, and I'm not exactly sure which breed of Angora it is. It's a soft breed. It's the soft one. That's what it is. Um, I mean, they're all soft, but they do have varying amounts of guard hair, depending on the particular breed. You have English, French, Satin, Giant, uh, German and each one's a little different. Some actually molt on their own and some have to be shorn. Um, so some, if you've ever been to a festival, perhaps you've seen someone spinning from a bunny and they can do that because the fiber actually, the hair just releases um, from the rabbit. So as long as they're doing it when the rabbit is molting, they're not hurting the rabbit and it's a really cool thing to watch. I've, I've seen it and it's, it's quite interesting. This was shorn. Someone actually cut this from a bunny. And this is also very long Angora fiber. Most Angoras maybe two and a half to three people think of as long. This stuff's nearer to three and a half, four. It's quite long and quite pretty. Um, as I'm putting it on, I'm actually trying to put the cut tips on first just so that as I comb it, I can sort of pull the guard hairs out. Now most Angora rabbit, the guard hairs are not so pokey that you're going to notice them, but I just will pull some out as I go along just because. I'm sure different breeds have different uh, amounts of irritation maybe from the guard hair. Some can be coarser than others, but as a general rule, people don't ever think of Angoras having any of the fibers that um, bother them. Um, Another thing about Angora and what I do with it, I do wash Angora fiber before I do any kind of processing. And most people will tell you, oh, you're not supposed to do that. Don't wash Angora. Don't ever do that. Well, I do. I wash it very carefully in a little mesh bag, in little small batches. And I'm very careful with it. I've never had felting issues. But you can if you're not careful. It will felt. Um, I just like all my fiber to be very clean, and even though rabbits fiber, you know, Angora rabbit fibers, the bunnies don't play outside, generally, in the dirt. People will let them outside in grassy areas, but it's not like sheep and goats and alpacas, and they don't go out and roll in the dust, and, and they're also smaller and treated as little pets, so people, you know, a lot of times even before they, they shear them, They'll brush out the fiber, so even if there were any bits of hay or fiber, um, vegetable matter or anything from being in the, their little houses or, or outside, they come pretty clean. But I just don't like the idea of any kind of dirt at all or saliva. Rabbits, if you've ever seen, they kind of wash themselves like cats do sometimes. And I just, I like the idea of my fiber being clean before I touch it. So. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Just be very careful if you do decide to wash it prior to, to doing any processing because you can't felt it very easily. So I'd already started putting some fiber on here, as you can see. And I'm just carefully putting the cut end on first. And I'm using my Valkyrie Super Fine Combs, which I love and I tell everybody to go out and buy them. <laughs> no, I'm not getting any kickbacks from it. I'm just an extremely happy customer. These are the most awesome combs, and I use them for... I do a lot of really fine fiber processing, like in the 20 micron or less, so I use these all the time. I also have in the back of the table back here, you can't really see very well, but let's see. In the back, back here, this is actually the hackle, and then over to the left side is the stationary comb, but that's the extra fine. I have the extra fine 
common hackle set as well. But I prefer, for most of the fibers I work with, the super fine work the best. I also have my super fine hackle over here, but I will not be using that for this demo because rabbit fiber, Angora Bunny, is it's very slick and you'll see that when I diz it off at the end it tends to not stay together very well um, so it's better to do a little combing and then take what you combed off and go directly to your wheel and spin that's what I do when working with Angora alright let's see where I can get this where you can see it the best all right, I've put on plenty enough, actually maybe even a little bit too much, but that's all right. So when you pack down your comb as you're putting the fiber on, it will naturally just sort of pack down. I always pull it back up a little to give some space in between. And then starting either from the side, give a little turn and pull back. And I do use my hand as an assist, as in... Um, other videos I've shown, I'm pretty sure I was doing the same thing, but I always use my hand to assist. It helps, especially for staticky fibers. If you just do this away, let's see if you can see that, it kind of leaves it sticking out. If I take my hand and run it over a little bit, gently, it tends to pack them together just a little bit so that they're not as fly away. Angora is very staticky. It's extremely fine and very staticky, but I have my spritz bottle with nothing but plain old water in it. And if I need to, I just do one quick little spritz on it. I don't want it to be beaded up with water or wet. If you get it too wet, it actually becomes more difficult to comb. You just want it to be help uh, control the static. So combing. And I also go from the bottom and up sometimes, but I think primarily it's um, sideways. You just have to take your time with the Angora fiber. It's not a fast process fiber. It's very flyaway. As you're working with it, whether it's combing or spinning it, you'll usually get little bits of it floating through the air. You may even inhale some, so be careful working with it. I would use a contrasting color cloth on your lap when spinning or even combing. That way it'll be easier to clean up or just have a vacuum standing nearby stand on standby so that you can clean up when you're done because I mean it just there's bits of it I don't think you can see it but there's bits of it flying everywhere. Um, you see these little guard hairs I don't know if you can well, there's some wool and guard hair in there but when I attach the fiber back to the stationary comb, I will be pulling some off. Now see there's some static, just a spritz, spritz to help control. And I may do that several times during, just to help control. So in a little bit from the side, and a little twist will actually help pull it off easier and make it stay on the comb better as well. Okay. Most people, I think, either just make fluff with their fingers out of the Angora fiber and spin it directly, or they use uh, cards. But if you have fiber that's long enough, you can comb it like this. I also have some very long white fiber that I have combed in the past. Angora is usually spun blended with other fibers. Angora by itself is not known to be very elastic if, if at all. So they blend it with other fibers like merinos and things that are you know, soft in the same softness range so that you get some elasticity in your yarn. Now you don't have to. You could certainly spin it straight which some people of course do. Just be careful what you use it for. Just know that it Unlikely, it's unlikely to have a lot of bounce and spring elasticity to it. So I'm almost done with getting it off. And I do use 
my left finger, when I put the fiber through, or the comb through, I grab a little and sort of pull to help get the last bits off that sometimes want to stay on there. So, then a little turn. The closer I get to the comb, the harder it is to actually twist it a little bit. So and this is, you know, my first quote combing waste, although it's not waste at all. It's actually I can. It's too short to recomb, but I can put it on hand cards and make cloud from it, like I've shown in other video using the pack of Acuna fiber. I can take this and make cloud out of it, or just fluff it and spin it for a more textured yarn. It stuffs everywhere. It's flying everywhere. The guard hair on Angora fiber is not generally worried about, so but I am going to pick some of it out. And I'm going side to side to put it back on. I'm just flipping the comb from one side to the other side. I love these combs. They work so well for this super fine fiber. I could never do this on combs with wider spacing between the tines. I just, I, I have tried. It's very difficult to get it to stay on. It just all comes off. But these Valkyrie Superfines are perfect. It's exactly what they were made for. Again, if you use your hand to assist, and sort of gently push it down. It'll help with the static. But it, it wants to fly back up, and it will help with that. See, it wants to come up, and I just push it down, run it back over. Like I said, you just have to move very slowly with this kind of fiber. It's not something you can do fast. If I had a wool, say Corydale or a Romney or something. Well, first of all, I wouldn't be using these combs. I'd be using the extra fines, but I'd be going much faster. You just have to be slow and careful. It's definitely worth the effort. A little bits of stuff in there. I'm going to pick out these little bits of st stuff that wanted to stick there. Okay. Now comes the, the dizzing, but I'm going to lift it back up, spread it out a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but at the end are a lot of the guard hairs. And if I want to, I can just pull off a bunch. They're not all going to come out, but a lot of the longest ones will. Like I said, most people don't bother. It just adds to the halo of the fiber, of the finished yarn, I mean, when you're done. But if you want to reduce the bits of guard hair that stick out, you can just sort of pull some off. But yeah, that's more than enough. See, I have all these mostly guard hair stuck in there, but there's also some good wool in there too, so be careful if you do that. You don't want to waste good fiber. Okay. So we're going to diz. If any of you have watched any of my other videos, you've seen my diz before. My plastic homemade diz out of a PVC pipe. It was a big pipe, like a four inch diameter pipe, and I just cut maybe a third section out of it or so. Drilled some holes in it. And then my fancy hook is nothing more than a size 14 little crochet hook. Those little thread crochet hooks. Alright. I'm going to do it just like any other dizzing. Start with a corner. I always start with the lower left corner. Just my method. You can start left or right, top or bottom. I don't think it makes any difference as long as you get it all in the end. I try to pull it together so that as I comb along, it'll, you know, pull. It doesn't have the same grab as wool, sheep's fiber. It's more like working with alpaca. 
who doesn't have quite the grab. So you have to do it slowly and carefully. I don't know how well you can see what I'm doing. Let me try to get you a better picture. I'm just pulling a little, going back in, pulling a little, going back in. And I haven't let it go with my left hand yet. I'm sort of holding in the left hand because I don't really want to let it go. It will fall apart more easily than wool. Again, very similar to alpaca in that regard. Try to pull it together. If you haven't already bought it, I do suggest buying the Fleece and Fiber Source Book by Deborah Robson and Carol Carius. Forgive me if I said that last name wrong. But it's a wonderful book. I've had it for several years and I refer to it quite often in my during all my fiber stuff. I'm always looking at it, learning something new. So the combing waste again, but which isn't really waste. And you have, this stuff does stick, you have some of the most gorgeous Duvine fiber to spin. Oh, I love, love this color. I don't know how well it shows up on the, uh, on your computer that you're watching this on, but I love this. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you want Combed, out, um, combed Angora Rabbit, you can certainly get it. Just try to buy some of the longer stuff because it will be much easier. And remember, when you spin it, it needs to be, it likes to be spun fine because it is a very fine fiber. You can spin it thicker, but it, it sort of more easily spins up finely, I think. And it's extremely warm. So if you do knit a skein, uh, sorry, spin a skein of yarn out of just Angora. Just remember to knit something that's very open and lacy because it will be so warm you don't want to make yourself sweat to death with it. So, beautiful Angora. Just, I would take my advice and, and comb a little though and then go straight to your wheel. You can keep it in a bunch like this, but I wouldn't try to open it up into a long strand and then try to wind it into a ball, even a loose one, it doesn't work very well because it sort of sticks to itself and doesn't let go. Um, not in the way that wool does, but I can't explain it. If you tried it once you'd understand it just sort of doesn't let go anyway. Could be static, I don't know. So. <coughs> Beautiful Angora, yay. So thank you for the request, Rachel, and I hope this was a help to you and anyone else watching. Thanks for watching. Bye.